So this is the Seat Turaco. This starts off a segment that Seat has never really competed in before. They now have a small off-roader, soft rotor. Now they have a big off-roader, but it is actually an off-roader as well. This is a four-wheel drive version. Also launching very soon in your local dealership. You can actually buy it right now in a Seat dealership. Is this an electric scooter? This retails about 550 euro in Ireland. It's actually made by Segway, the same company that made the original Segway stuff. This one is now Seat branded and you can buy it in a dealership. Now, some laws are probably going to change in the near future surrounding these electric scooters. They're heralded as unsafe and dangerous, but of course they're not. Uh, it's just uh, maybe certain bike hire companies don't like the idea of people being able to buy these little scooters. But phenomenal fun that thing best thing i've had on test ever forget about cars just this is the best thing i've ever seen it's brilliant it's quick it's got different modes and stuff i can make it do kind of a slow kiddie mode thing and i can go right up to 25 kilometers an hour on this thing it's absolutely phenomenal charges up in no time at all and the best part is it folds up so look at this this is great this is very simple and straightforward stuff There you go now you can walk away with this not light this is ugh, feels good 15 13 to 15 kg but you know if you're walking onto a train or a lewis or something it doesn't look at it doesn't really take up a lot of room see them getting that it's quite small in that respect and then when you get to the other end you just push this drop that push forward and then hide the little pedal go beep and you're off that's it Here's a clip of me riding it. Now there's also Bluetooth apps and stuff attached to this little device. Uh, it does a very good job. It tells you your range, tells you your speeds and your colors and your lights. You can do colors underneath. You can turn on a little light on the front of it here. There's an LED light built in. There's rear tail lights built in. It's well worked out. But of course, we're in the dark ages. We have a pile of politicians who are leading us, being led by old people who don't understand what that thing is. They just see that as dangerous. It's dangerous and it's health and safety. And nah, 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 nah. Anyway, brilliant fun. 550 quid. But a little bit more than 550 euro, you can have this little baby here as well, which is Say a Taraco. The best car. Seat has ever put together uh, and I've said that before about this car but it still is a phenomenal piece of kit there's a lot of crossover parts between this and the Volkswagen Group cars but Seat have managed to make it look and more importantly feel a little bit different a little bit more Spanish uh, even on their license plate it says created in Barcelona I love it absolutely love it now let's have a look on the inside of this but before we do that you make sure you click that subscribe button because this is about to get very interesting so interesting is the operative word because we're about to review this car in such a way that gives you an idea of what this car is all about now i am sitting in a volkswagen group car excuse all the cables and stuff i'm actually on test as well right now is a is a dash cam in this car why i say it feels a bit more sad is because i just i feel it i feel a difference in everything that's here the cabin the layout the vibe yeah the the air conditioning system looks identical to everybody else's in this group but that's no harm because it's three knobs and above them i have heated seats which is very good uh, then i have directional ones that can make it go up and down uh, seating position is luxurious is the best way to put it i just feel like i'm lying back in the realm of luxury uh, for a seat that's saying a lot seat tend to be the kind of more affordable brand in the volkswagen group and yet i feel like i'm in a bit more of a luxurious car uh, also i have this big touch screen here in the middle and i also have a uh, infotainment kind of dashboard laid out here as well i'll come to those in a second big big glove box over there also get two sd cards and a cd slot in there for your satin halves and for you know whatever you want to play music and stuff on a cd um big armrest in the center massive cup holders that can drop in and out and do all sorts of weird things there 
this car parks itself it has uh, active cameras around the outside of the car which i'll show you in a second as well uh, it also has two usb ports in here an aux connector and a 12 volt socket in a sort of a dump area in here but also crucially has wireless charging in here too so however you want to charge your phone it's in this little kind of cubby hole here perfection that is i have to applaud say it on that one under here i have another cubby hole this little armrest is extendable as well to make it a bit longer a bit more comfy so you have a bit of a stretch on it uh it's seven speed dsg box right so we're going to start it up now and you'll hear that two liter diesel cut in outside which is fine uh it works fine uh, it's not very fuel efficient i have to say it's fairly hard on fuel and i think that's coming from the four-wheel drive system it just seems like it's not doing so well on the fuel efficiency front uh, see if i can find out what the actual fuel efficiency is right now the current average consumption is 9.8 liter per 100 kilometers and that's not good but i don't think that's right average consumption overall is eight liters per 100 kilometers that's not great for a diesel if i'm honest if i'd prefer to be closer to six liters per 100 kilometers um there is also add blue in this so a chunk of your fuel tank is gone in the add blue system so it does feel like it's using more fuel than it actually is uh right so the touch screen here in the center that's fine does a good job being a touch screen only the vital controls are on touch screen you still have a volume knob and you still have a sort of a tuning knob but everything else is on the touch screen system inside but the air conditioning system is not on touch screen it is on normal twiddly knobs down here at the bottom uh touch screen itself works fine it's a little bit old-fashioned in the volkswagen group range but that's actually okay because that worked uh there was no problem with it so it worked fine um and more importantly is that something works rather than something is cool but only works sometimes uh long-term fuel economy here says 8 liters per 100 kilometers yeah so 610 kilometers to empty it's not brilliant but it's for a size of a car this size is seven seat car it's not that bad also has a built-in eco trainer thing which is kind of cool it's got a picture of the car on it if i press the um, parking sensors i come up with four cameras around the edge right so i can touch one of those cameras i'm showing that wheel so that's the front wheel with the scooter outside of it uh, but i can also touch another up here i see the front see the other side view see the rear view whatever view i think i need to get at i can get out from just touching the screen very clever this also has active parking i'm in the field i'm not going to park it here but it has active parking as well which means the car will do this we've seen this before right it looks cool it's doing a little dance and reversing into space works well if a little bit slow um, they're all slow by the way that's not a slant on seat or volkswagen group just all those active parking yours are very slow to do the job seats are ultra comfortable a uh, really good long range cruiser this one for for comfort wise very impressive interior and feels sufficiently different from the rest of the volkswagen group as well worth a note beat system that's in this the speakers are incredibly good and plays very good spotify links up apple carplay uh, android auto the whole lot is already involved in the car so it all works out of the box now if you haven't hit the subscribe button before you should do it at this moment we're going to go to the back seat next though have a look around there not sure why it dings when i turn it off it just seems to do it every time that there's something wrong i don't know what it is back seat this is the back seat of the say Turaco. it is very big i got in there no problem at all very big door on the Turaco. the back door is actually good it's a good thing but it's a bit heavy when it's at full stretch it's a bit heavy to get it started to close it yet my eight-year-old can do it so it shouldn't be that bad uh, also back here i have um, temperature controls and heated seats in the rear uh, one usb port and a 12 volt socket should you need it one usb port is better than none i'd prefer to see two uh, i have a tray table which is at a funny slant oh no, there it goes so i have a little tray table here for drinks and i can pull a little drinks thing out of the side of that to carry my drinks as well uh, you press the button to put it away i like that uh, i have a center armrest with two cup holders built in uh, there's no ski loader through in this because this is a full hatchback so there's nothing behind that um and this seat drops in the center somewhere 60 40 isn't it oh yeah there we go all right there it is so that drops down here um and slides forward at that to allow the people to access the last row of seats so it's easy to slide it forward easy to slide it back and easy to push that back up on top as well very straightforward back here is nice i have isofix on both these seats and a standard seat in the middle i will fit in the center as well you will carry at least five passengers in this but there's another row of seats 
back there to be able to carry an extra couple of kids as well so you're going to be carrying at least seven people in this car at any given moment i do like this car this is like i say sufficiently different from the rest of the skoda and volkswagen range in the same model of car uh, led lights which are really good here on the top that you can turn on and off yourself and you get coat or sorry coat hooks and things as well in the back this car really doesn't do a whole lot of things wrong guys let's have a look at the boot so the boot is electrically operated you can do it from the keys or from the button just underneath it just lifts up out of the way now this is it in five seat mode so you see i've got all of my camera equipment scattered to the four winds in here uh, and there's tons of room for everything even the old big old work boots that are in here as well uh, where i have to go for nasty dirty areas um the two seats that are in here as well just lift back up you can put them in they're very straightforward to use really easy on the eye this car also underneath here if i push a few things out of the way you will notice that there is a tonneau cover in here so you have somewhere to store it that isn't the garage you don't have to take it out and put it anywhere it's actually here on like someone maybe like peugeot where you have to take it out entirely or i think mazda do one as well where you take the whole thing out uh nowhere to store it this one actually has a place to store it right there if you don't want to store it you get more storage space underneath here if you don't want to store that you want to put it in the garage or something there is actually more areas underneath here to put things you can drop the back seats from switches here which should drop that oh no that drops them seats does it no that can't be right no there it goes it does drop those seats there you are now now i have a van right now it's van space so tons of room in here too there's green feet <laughs> uh, tons of room in here as well it works absolutely perfectly well really happy with this boot uh, i wouldn't use the seven seat ones but my kids love the idea of sitting in the very back row of a car just because it feels like a bus or something i think i'm not sure anyway let's straighten up the seats and go for a drive actually you can just keep rolling because you know if i uh, show how to straighten up the seats which is well that's that job done that was difficult wasn't it so the Taraco is more than the sum of its parts when you think about it right it's able to carry seven people it's able to carry five people and a lot of luggage it's able to carry seven and a little bit of luggage or it's able to be a van type size you know a big car it's also a four-wheel drive this model is uh, you can get in four-wheel drive as well this has seven speed DSG box that means it's able to go off-road as well and that's not something that you come across every day now I'm not saying you're going to be climbing Everest in this or anything, right? But the chances are most, most off-road cars, even the heaviest of heavy-duty off-road cars, don't really do a lot of off-roading. They just are there in case they're required. But this car is able to go off-road, like I just did. Now this isn't exactly, you know, climbing Mount Everest, like I said but it is about as off-road as any of these cars are capable of doing. Now, it means that I can get into fairly rough stuff and the chassis has enough flex in it, there's enough ground clearance here, I'm not banging off the ground. That's the key, that's the bit of off-road that really matters, is the ground clearance, how much room you have underneath the car to be able to dip the nose and get out of areas. And that's the angle of attack in and out it really matters with off-roads because it means you can climb heavier hills and things do whatever you want to do i find this car really dead comfy in the off-road situation it's doing it right now this minute and i am very comfortable i am at 18 and a half degrees i have my sat nav set i don't have my seat heaters on but i could put them on if i wanted to uh, i'm sitting in a really comfy seat and i'm going up and down to the undulating territory that's out here you can see it on the camera bumping around here all as well the difference is that what say have done here is just sprinkle a little sort of spanish magic on it just a little bit it's just sufficiently different from the rest of what volkswagen's doing with this model of car to be a different car it feels different it certainly looks different uh, i do like that uh, snub nose kind of front to it a kind of a squintier meaner looking nose now if you didn't see it you can actually see my first drive of this was last year in spain somewhere i don't remember where it's not terrible i think it was barcelona could have been 
Uh, but I certainly do remember the drive itself it was a very memorable drive and a lovely car to be driving it on. Now the beauty of this is I've just done a circuit of this whole area here and I'm going to do just a sudden left turn to test the ability of it turning over really rough ground. No, it's dead comfy. That's ridiculous. That's over really rough ground without warning. You're not lining the wheels up, you're just pointing the wheels towards it. Then when you want to, back of the road and boom! I didn't touch any settings. I did nothing. I am in eco mode at the moment and I've left it in that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so now um, I'm pulling back out onto normal roads and driving I can look at the, the turn dial down here as well so I have an eco setting which I was running it in for a while that kind of deadens the throttle doesn't really appear to do a whole lot else other than get the start stop system active all the time and uh, my air conditioning is still on everything seems to work then you have like normal which is called normal setting now I can't tell the difference between eco and normal I can't normal seems to be the same the throttle response maybe is a little bit faster but not, not really that noticeable then there's sport where the throttle response is faster uh, so when you put your foot down it, it changes down the gear much quicker and it'll hold the gear a bit longer on a dash course as s4 and stuff then you have modes like uh, uh, individual and then you have off-road and snow. So I didn't use off-road there when I was driving across that. You don't need that. Off-road is, is when you're going to get wheel slip, a lot of wheel slip. Then you put it into off-road mode because it, what it'll do is drop the power on certain wheels and add power elsewhere when required. This is a four-wheel drive. I do have a seven-speed uh, gearbox in this as well, which is very quiet. And what I want to draw your attention to is just how quiet the car is when it's warm and on the move. So it's not urgent, but it's definitely warm and on the move. And I feel that waft along feeling. This, the road surface is being smoothed out. And I use this road a hell of a lot when I'm doing reviews um, so, because it's got a lot of little tiny bumps and undulations and flat bits and kind of cambers and weird stuff on it. And you really get the grips with the suspension system in a car and I can find out what it's actually doing. Now, right now, I would swear to you I am on a different road entirely this does not feel like the road I commonly drive it's just smoothly moving along it that is really good and I mean honest to God it's just so comfortable practicality wise I have everything I need in here to make this a very simple car to use I even have a little kind of secret cubby hole over here to one side now I would like if that cubby hole had some carpet in it but there is carpet in the door bins so you can put stuff into the door bin here and it'll be fine it's not going to rattle about into it uh, love that cubby hole in the center as well with the um, two usb ports wireless charge and 12 volt socket and an aux connector very clever to have it all in that one little kind of cubby hole area there too plenty of room in the back for the kids it is just an all-around decent vehicle to have so i'm going to flash up the price list along the side of the screen here to give you an idea of what kind of range this car has uh, and where the prices are it's impossible to say all the prices in one shot and i don't like starting prices because nobody buys the entry model of anything you'd be mad to. i'm glad you watched this far into the review i hope you've hit the subscribe button at some point to this i'm surely i have earned it off you at this stage uh, it'd be great if you could click the bell icon beside that as well which defeats the whole idea of needing subscribers to subscribe because when you click the bell icon you get a notification when we put up a video uh, but you can support this channel in multiple ways underneath and i also have a little amazon affiliate program thing going as well uh, i genuinely sat down and picked out each of the products on as products i have used tested and that i use every day in these reviews so whether it be editing or filming or travel you will find something there that i actually use in my daily life in that affiliates program so i'd appreciate it if you're going to buy something on amazon anyway click the link down below takes you to amazon have a browse at the shop if you don't want to buy it then don't just have a browse through the shop and see what's there i'd be very appreciated it's great because if you're going to buy it on amazon anyway one of the affiliates should get some of the cut out of it it'd be great so thank you very much for watching and until the next time i will see you on the far side